Hi guys, Jason here from Atlantic Knives. Uh, I've gotten lots of questions on some of the things that we do as far as upgrades, uh, dying scales, and all of those types of things. So where today I have a bunch of knives here you can see taken apart on the table. There are seven artisan cutlery tomahawks. These are for a wedding that is coming up. He did not want them in orange, so we are gonna custom dye these to a dark charcoal or black color. You'll see I've already dyed the backspacers. They've come out this color. So give me a few minutes guys. I'm gonna take you through a little bit of the process on how we do it. And also when I'm done, I'm going to set the camera up and you can watch us reassemble one of these things and uh, see a little bit more of some of the things that we do here at Atlantic Knives that you don't get to see. All right, guys, this is, uh, we're back to dyeing some scales here. As you can tell, I've got uh, seven knives taken apart here, all the scales taken off them. And uh, first step, once you do it, is uh, we're gonna take and submerge them in a little bit of dish soap. Now, the other thing I find really handy, guys, is just a standard toothbrush. Um, now, I'm gonna soak, let's say, four at a time because I'm only gonna die about four at a time in the pot. I could probably do six or seven, but I don't want them laying over top of each other and affecting the dye. So I'm only gonna die four at a time. Uh, so basically I'm gonna let them soak for a few minutes and then we're gonna give them a real good scrub both sides, take them off, take them out, wash them off with some hot water and then uh, set them aside to dry before we, and we'll look them all over, make sure there's no spots or dirty spots, oil spots. And what happens is a lot of times, uh, when they put oil in around your pivot, they usually put a little extra or put some extra oil on your blade for shipping because you never quite know how long one of these knives are going to sit on the shelf uh, in between the time the manufacturer makes it and the time that you buy it. Um, so generally they, they have a little bit of uh, extra oil on them when you get them. Um, that's just to protect them. It doesn't hurt them at all. However, it does seep onto the G10. So when you go to dye your scales, if you don't clean them properly and don't handle them properly, when you dye them, it could come out with defects in your dye or little spots on your handles that don't dye the same color. Lots of little things. So we always make sure that we wash them up really well. And I'm just gonna scrub them, scrub inside the little holes. Cause that's where your oil would be. Make sure we scrub both sides really well. So, that one we're going to take over and wash under some hot water after. And again, you're going to go through and do this with each and every scale that you dye prior to dyeing it because you don't want your dye to come out irregular or... And this will just make sure you get a nice even coating. So what I'll do guys is I'm going to speed this up because I know you guys don't want to watch me wash a bunch of scales. Um, so we'll catch you back here in just a little bit. All right. So now we got our four scales all washed off. I'm going to run them under some hot water here and I'll be right back guys. All right, so there's our four scales all washed and ready to go. We're going to uh, take these over and put them in the die. So just be a moment and we'll be right with you. All right, guys, 
here we are let me get the camera adjusted here a little bit so all I'm using to do our dyeing today is some vinegar that I got at the dollar store which I see I've already had some backspacers being dyed I'm just gonna add a little more vinegar to this because we boiled some of it off we're gonna add a little bit more dye as well I'll show you what we're using for dye this I picked up at Walmart it's called wheat dye it is a liquid I'm using the charcoal gray and we're gonna use a liberal amount now you gotta remember I've already had dye in here before so I'm just adding it up topping it up a little bit uh, we're gonna put it on a very very low simmer so just before the water starts to break or when it starts to boil that's about the temperature you want to do and uh, I just kind of keep it on that temperature these will not melt uh, you'd have to boil them at a really high temperature it's kind of amazing how strong or um, durable the G10 really is I'm quite amazed by it so we're just gonna sit and let that start to boil and we're gonna boil it probably for about five minutes or so and then uh, we'll take it out and check it if you have a scale that's not quite dying in all the same spots you can also take a toothbrush brush it a little bit where it's not dying put it back in and boil it a little longer and it should cover the spot that uh, didn't get quite enough dye on it or but generally I have found they come out really really consistent as long as you let them boil for let's say about five to ten minutes depending now also I found with certain colors the longer you boil it um, and depending on of course how much dye you use but the longer you boil it the darker the color or deeper the color you'll get so sometimes if you want a light color drop it in your dye boil it for a minute or so pull it out um, one way to do that is you'll notice the scales have the holes from the screws uh, a great tip is if you take a couple of paper clips you can actually bend them and fold them and hang them on the side of your pot and still allow it to be fully submerged and that way when you go to take them out it's very easy uh, you can check the dye on it and put them back in that's a, a way I probably should have done this right now I'm just uh, using one paper clip to dig them in and out and that kind of thing so you don't necessarily need to do it to everyone but uh, it does make it really easy when it comes time to take them out and also you don't need to have a lot of water as long as it's completely covering the scales but it will boil off while you're boiling it so you might want to boil it at a slower temperature also some people mix the vinegar and water I use straight vinegar I find it works better to adhere the dye to the scales the only thing I'll tell you is you don't want to stand over top of it when it's boiling and it definitely clear out your sinuses really quick and stink up your entire house something I'd prefer to do in a garage or outside if I had the choice alright guys we're back and this has been boiling along here for a pretty good clip now we're gonna check it again Wow, these are hot. So as you can see, they're coming out nice. I'm gonna be dyed. As you notice, it won't rub off. All right, those ones are almost there. I'm gonna leave them for another couple of minutes. Just maybe stir them around a little. Make sure there's none on the bottom that didn't get dyed and then we'll be back and put in some new ones all right guys well we're back and I've just pulled four scales out they are black now what I do with them after is I set them on an old cloth I'm gonna go grab my toothbrush and we're going to use a little bit of the same water with a little bit of dish soap and we're just going to scrub it scrub any extra dye off 
You'll notice it's leaving a nice dye all over my face cloth here. I scrub it all down real good. And if by chance it didn't dye enough, then you can always put it back in the dye. And give it a quick wipe. And you'll see. That's the color. I really like how it come out. Again, here's another one before we scrub it. Looks drab and kinda matte black. I'm gonna give it a good scrub. Get all that extra dye out of there. To wash off your toothbrush and get a little bit more soap on there, you feel free. That one almost looks a little too orange right there, so it may have to go back in for a little bit more dyeing. Yep, you'll notice, guys, this one is the orange is showing through a bit more than I would like, so back in it goes. And if you're not careful, you will dye your entire stovetop. <laughs> Obviously, I'm not too concerned. All right, guys, we will be back here in just a moment. All right, guys, welcome back. It's about 5.30 in the morning here. Um, just sitting down with a nice cup of coffee. Gonna finish putting together the last one of our artisan cutlery tomahawks that I had dyed. So I showed you most of the other process. I figured I might as well show you putting one of the last ones together. So, I'm gonna start with our stainless liner, our G10. Start with the fancy pivot. So we're gonna do display side first. So I always line up my pivot. The very next thing I would line up on this one is gonna be one of our very bottom screws. So what I noticed as well is there's a little bit of old Loctite inside of these. I just twist it off my fingers, make sure my screws are nice and clean, and just blow these out and make sure they're nice and clean as well. So this is your standoff. This blade has two standoffs, one on the very end, which is the one I'm going to line up first. And that way my pivot and my rear standoff are all lined up perfectly. Finger tight it for now. guys so we have our first standoff in set down in the liner these ones actually sit down inside so I'm gonna put our second standoff in Just kind of put them in finger tight. There, so we have our two standoffs in. We have our pivot in. Now, while I have it setting this stage, 
as well. I'm going to put my backspacer in. Oh, helps if you turn it the right way. All right, so your backspacer is all in. Everything's lined up perfect on this side. Now, I'm going to add my washer in, but just before I do, I like to add just a little drop of oil to the collar on my pivot, one on each side. Put my bearings in. Again, I'm going to add just a little drop of oil on each side. Now, I'm going to put my blade on, but you also need to remember that you need a blade stop up here. So this is one of the pieces that a lot of guys forget about and tend to lose. So you want to make sure that you keep your blade stop in place. I find this is the easiest way to put it back together. Then I'm going to take my other liner. You'll notice it has a little flat spot. You're going to line that up with your pivot and then just push it into its position and everything should sit nice and tight and snug. You'll notice all the collars fit directly in, there's no spaces, so that's how you know you've got it nice and tight. Then while squeezing it tight, I'm going to put my liner on, keeping a nice tight squeeze on it. And the very first thing I'm going to do is after I line it up, I'm just going to drop my pivot in and finger tight it down. being stubborn. I'm just going to put it down my finger tight. And then I'll come down here and put in my last screw on this side. tightening everything down real tight yet and then I will put my pocket clip in now this is not the right screwdriver for this so I'm just going to use it to push my screws down in place first we're going to go back to our trusty benchmade tool I really like this tool, however, I, I must admit, I do like a straight screwdriver a little bit better. Uh, these, if you're not careful, they want to twist and turn. I find if you pinch it near the top, it works great. But, again, given the choice, I would have a nice set of Wiaz or something like that normally. What I do is I get them all in tight guys and then I go around and just slowly torque down each one of them just a little bit more. Just to make sure we get everything seated nice and tight. And then I'm going to finish tightening down my pivot. your blade all back together. So there we go guys. There's all seven of the artisan cutleries stripped down, taken apart, dyed, and ready to go. I must admit, kind of wish I was a groomsman in this wedding. Well, gentlemen, there's your blades. I hope you like them. 
I'll get those put out to you right away.